What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Bronx Pinstripe Show. It's going to be a little bit of an abbreviated episode today. It's late in the day on Monday. Normally, we try to record it early in the morning or, or after the games. But I was traveling back from the West Coast. Scott, you were at a bachelor party two or three weeks ago. At least yours was in the same time zone. When you, when you, when you couple the debauchery of a bachelor party, which had 15 guys, by the way, okay? It's Mine had guys. 25. Mine had Jesus 25. Christ. That, yeah. Try that's planning insane. that. insane. Yeah, it's impossible. It's insane. But when you couple, it was it was good though. It actually worked out nicely. Okay. Well, when you couple a bachelor party with a west to east travel, yeah, that's a lot. It makes for a miserable Monday. Let me tell you. (laughs) At least you had some time to sleep on the plane. No, 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 I didn't. No, you're you can't. There's no way you can sleep on a plane, right? No, cannot sleep on a plane. Caught up. There's no way life affords you that luxury. (laughs) Caught up on Kenobi. (laughs) Ah, oh, there you go. Yeah. Well, you know, I think that uh, this this past weekend I was in. So I missed last uh, last week's last recording because I was at a conference in Dallas all week. So we've been jet setting. That's what we are. We're jet setters mm-hmm. and jet-setters. trying to make sure that the Yankee games are on the entire. You know, it's funny because I was uh, I was making it a point each night to find a bar with the Yankees game. Everybody else in Dallas is like, "Who gives a shit?" I was like, "I give a shit. Let's go find." The game, so we like, can no, watch no. it. Cow- Cowboys training camp is on. Yeah, I'm like, no, 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 no. We're gonna go watch baseball. <laughs> Did you um, find a couple it? times? Well, I had to put it on my phone and put it against a napkin holder. Yeah, and that was just, that was just what's gonna happen because um, I'm a lunatic and I need to see what's happening. And then you know, renovating my house because uh, we are in the process of selling it all weekend. Got John and got John and Susan, and I'm I've started to listen. This is not just a me you know, going down the, down the road, which I don't, don't make light of or condone, uh, listen to the car. I listened to the, the, um, TV broadcast. Oh, you did, you did yeah. the responsible thing and you didn't watch television as you were driving an automobile. No, no, no. This is when I'm renovating a bathroom, oh. listening to the, I would do the opposite, listening to the video version of it. Because at, at that point, if I don't know what's happening, which it puts me on level footing with the audio, at least I can look over and look and see it. <laughs> that's, where, that's, that's where I am. Today. So you match up because MLB, the MLB app has this thing where you can match up the, uh, the video with the radio broadcast. Yeah. No, I didn't you, do that. You could do that. So it's like if you're, you know, you can turn over and glance at it every now and again, but you mostly want the audio for the description. You could do that, which, is, which I've done before. It's actually, it's, I, I like it. Sometimes it gets out of sync, especially out of commercials, which I hate. Yes. And it's like, and it's like the the it'll just be the blank screen, and then Sterling's talking about the third pitch of the inning, and I'm like, well, where the frick is this thing? But whatever. I'm gonna be very honest. The other reason why I did this while while tiling in my bathroom is because I had it on a speaker as well, and the radio broadcast from the app is egregious with the commercials, the volume, the volume oh. like blares as soon as the commercials go, and I couldn't handle it anymore. It was so loud, echoing in a bathroom that. I couldn't handle it anymore, so I put on the TV broadcast so that it was at least, you know, the same uh, the same volume throughout because it made for a terrible experience. Are they so, still advertising. Been, it's always been like that. Are they still advertising that new MLB.com Red Sox podcast on the Yankees broadcast? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, uh, no, hey no, guys, not... How about some targeted ads here, please? What are we doing? Yeah, th- that was that was awful. I'm was listening to WFA. Break. I'm listening to the fan audio, and you're telling me to go listen to a new freaking Red Sox podcast, idiots. Anyway, yeah. what do you think of this baseball team right now? Good, uh, good money spent. <laughs> You know, pitching's pitching's good. Um, Arazis Chapman is uh, is the new Carl Pavano. When I saw that headline, I was like, "Of course, that's exactly what happened." Of course, he's on the IL with a with a freaking tattoo that w- got infected. That's crazy. one of the all time silly injuries. Like you've got, I remember, uh, remember Ugi Urbina. Didn't he have like, uh, didn't he get like Guitar Hero yeah. or some something or something? like? Didn't he injure himself playing Guitar Hero? I don't know. But don't you get like an antibiotic just just because? Uh, uh, I I don't have any tattoos, so I don't know this. But isn't that like a precautionary measure? I would think no. if you're a professional athlete, you could you could get some uh, some some quick hookups. Logan looks like he's got a full sleeve tattoo. Maybe maybe he could tell us. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I'm but yeah, no. Guy. The the back to back to a very inconsistent offense. That's the you know the outbursts and then the judge home run. Um, but really, the offense was pretty much non-existent once again. So. I, look, I, 
here I am again going back to the to the good side. The Yankees, I think, showed some uh, some some very good things last week in what we wanted to see. We needed them to rebound. They did. Um, you know, a split in Oakland is not the worst thing in the world when you're going to the West Coast. It's not a good team. It's a bad team. Yeah, but the like, Oakland look at how you lost those team. games. Like, look at how you lost those games. Like, you. That's you, the problem. You did the have problem is positive, you don't get hits. Right. You had positive things coming out of the homestand. You won the. They won the last game. Then they swept the the mini Met series, and like there was some positive vibes going out west. And the first game, you put up thirteen. Uh, you put up. Uh, no, what was it? It was 13 runs and 20 hits uh, in the first game. Off too, yeah. Yeah, and then you score six total runs over the next 29 innings. Like, yeah, you're right. They split it, but that that's a pretty bad way to split a series. Yeah, it's like, I don't know. I just, I, I like reminisced a little bit. He, they, he had 86 pitches, and he didn't even finish the third. I mean, that's the way that the, they used to really do things. They would grind those pitches down, and they would be like, damn, this guy's at 100 pitches. They're in the fourth inning. And now it's like... I mean, they did it in the last two games terribly, not to jump ahead. Like, they 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 were swinging at the first pitch like crazy. And, like, they, like, got frustrated, and they were, like, just trying to make something happen instantly. And it was like, this is not your approach. It doesn't work. Yeah. No, it hasn't. It hasn't worked. The, the Yankees are very known, at least they should be known, and they have been in the past, for grinding those at-bats, working it. And getting good information. That's that's what's so important about having the, the top of your lineup, being able to to work and having a good leadoff guy who can grind and actually give you some good information. And if you're not getting that and if you're if you're going too early and trying to make things happen, they're pressing. They press. They start pressing in those long stretches where they don't have a hit. And this team is not good when they're pressing. If they're not playing their game in their approach, that's when you start seeing the the holes being exposed. And and that's that's a problem. It was good to see Stanton back. You know, immediately he was uh, contributing, but you know they got to get back into that groove. And 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 yeah, they can't have everybody be slumping at one time. That the lineup is not built that way. It should not be happening. Well, it wasn't happening in the first half of the season. That even if you had guys slumping, there were other guys to pick it up on a nightly basis. And now it seems like the offense is very contagious, both good and bad. They get 20 hits and 13 runs in one game because everyone's feeding off of one another. And then the next few games, they're only scoring runs on the judge home run, the Higgy solo shot. And then that, that 11 inning game was extra painful. You don't even score a run on a hit. You, you get gifted two runs and that's the only way you score runs is on the wild pitch. Yeah. The, the fact that you're, <laughs> and, and even, even on that game, the, uh, the only hit sixth inning rookie kid, kid is just like, Coming in there, being the being the guy that's actually um, you know showing up. He's he's been freaking good, by the way. I, and I know that Marwin Gonzalez just got put on uh, paternity leave, but his role on this team moving forward with if if uh, if Cabrera is here, I, I don't see it. He can do everything he that that Marwin Gonzalez can do, but better and yeah, but with like, more enthusiasm and more fun. fun. Yeah, they just need they need healthy bodies back, so they don't need to have Marwin Gonzalez on the roster at this point. And that's the thing, you know, getting more pushing chase, uh, Clay Holmes today, finally getting back and they need him very badly with, uh, with Chapman's, um, you know, quote injury or the, the infection happening on his tattoo. What is the tattoo? Do we know what the tattoo is? Did we, did we find out what the tattoo was? I feel like that's an important piece of information. Why? It, because if it was like his, his mother's name or something or like his child, I, name, I need to know yeah, that it, if it was just like barbed yeah. wire. If it's barbed wire across his arm and that was what got infected, I got an even bigger problem with it. If it's if it's like a child's name that he had just been putting off and like, you know, couldn't get an appointment until much later in the season, you know, maybe I'll look at it a little differently. You think but this is the someone slipped most... a dirty needle to that guy. You think this is the oh, you think it was foul play? Possibly. Possibly. Possibly foul play. This is why we need more information about the tattoo. You need more context so that I can uh, make a better judgment. You don't see. I see. I feel like Chapman should be at a level where he's got he's got a really good tattoo artist, and he doesn't have to worry about infections. But this, you would you think know, maybe maybe this is like a drunken, grimy tattoo parlor type of deal. He said um, he said somewhere that um, it was a leg tattoo, and yeah, huh? he said specifically that he's gotten tattoos during the season before, and this has never happened, and that it's very scary. Very scary. It's very an scary. ass tattoo, <laughs> which is close to the leg. <laughs> And his, upper, his, upper leg. his normal upper guy leg. didn't do it because uh, he couldn't wait till the next homestand or just decided on a whim, I'm going to get it after they left the homestand. Yeah. I don't know, man. I, I, there's just, I feel like you could avoid that situation pretty, pretty easily. And with the Yankees, 
um, struggling in their bullpen and him specifically, you'd think that maybe you'd want to wait a couple months to get that one, huh? Well, maybe, also... maybe wait, maybe, maybe just wait. Sure. Do you think Logan said earlier, this might be the last time we ever see Chapman pitch in a Yankees uniform? Like if this is a severe infection, he's not really able to come back. Like, is this how the overall this Chapman Yankees era ends? How does that happen? How do you get a severe infection? I, no, no, no. I don't quite understand this. We are not in a third world, third world country. This is this is this is a man that have has a lot of resources and a lot of um, a lot of just money and connections to the right people without dirty needles and also the right people you'd think be able to get in front of an, an infection so that it's not you know we're not getting like a influenza on the the Oregon Trail like this is something that he should be able to come back for throw some amoxicillin in your body get it get it to a good place. And uh, maybe I'm speaking completely ignorant about this, but I, I, I don't I don't know how this uh, this is something that that lingers on as long as it, the problem is is that he's gonna have to redo again if he can't throw if he can't work on his mechanics while this is happening to me that's the biggest thing I I'm just gonna assume that the infections under control at this point if it's not then then and poo on me I'm an idiot but if it is he still can't be you know getting the same work in and that's gonna affect him in a very negative way on the field we know what happens when Rawls Chapman is out of sync. It ain't good. It ain't good, uh, and it takes him a long time to get back into that, the, you know, the good, the good positioning for for him to succeed on this team. So, I don't know. So I don't know I if it's the last time we see him, but maybe it's a, you know we've definitely seen the last time he's ever succeeded as a Yankee. I got, I googled leg tattoo infection, and of course the world of Chapman news comes up. But according to Google, how do I know if my leg tattoo is infected? Just got a it's few red. things here: yeah. fever, waves mm-hmm. of heat and cold, abnormal shivering. Swelling of the tattooed area, pus mm. coming out of the area. That that's seems a, like that's potentially a the pretty worst clear one. sign, I'd say. <clears throat> red lesions around the area, red streaking from the area, mm. areas of hard raised tissue. Not good. Yeah, some some bad ones on here. Maybe, I mean, maybe he just had abnormal shivering and a little bit of a fever, or maybe he had pus coming out of his leg. Well, at least if there's pus coming out of your leg, like it's exiting your body. So, you know, that's the body trying to clean something itself and trying to, trying to, uh, you know, normalize, but none of that sounds good. Just wait a few, wait a little bit to get a tattoo. How about that? In a, in a more controlled, understood environment when you can chill and head on the, stay on the couch and just lay down and not do much. And they are, like you said, they are getting Clay Holmes back, which is potentially huge, obviously. And the bullpen though. It's just been taxed. It's, it's lacking bodies. And it was evident when they sent Marinaccio back out to close out the game on Saturday, even though he had already pitched the previous inning. They had Trevino warmed up and, and available, and he gave up the home run to vote. Uh, but it, the pitching overall was still really good. So I still point back to the offense and the lack of offense and the, just the, the stretches of ineptitude from the offense as the reason why this team is going through – so many struggles and has been so inconsistent. It's not the pitching. It has been the stretches of two to two and a half games of just no offense. The pitching's actually gone through like normal ups and downs, I feel like. They've they've yeah. they've hit the normal, you know, positions within a season that, that you start to get tired or you start to lose your 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 timing, whatever that is. But you're absolutely right. The offense has gone on to way too many sustained uh, slumps as a team. And when you start failing again with runners in scoring position, um, as, as they did, I think, uh, what Friday they went one for eight. Um, JP Sears comes in, uh, what eight hits. I'm looking at, at Logan's notes, eight hits. Um, but he's a guy that you should be going out there and, and, and doing well against, um, when you can't hit with runners in scoring position, it's just going to add to the inconsistencies. It's a problem. No Otani this hitting. week coming up. That's something on the pitcher side. So you, you think that's like, oh, that now not going to get gifted a start because he can't pitch against the Yankees? He's not going to walk four guys in an inning to start the game? Oh, because is that – I don't know. Does that translate into uh, – in, in Anaheim, though? That, I mean, those, those Anaheim games when the Yankees are there, they're like 75% Yankees fans. I know, but his his big struggles have come at Yankee Stadium. I, I'm saying yeah. they're they're dodging hopefully a good pitcher in Otani, uh, not not having to go against him. Logan, you you know I I think offhand I don't think he's ever pitched against the Yankees in Anaheim. But also yeah. I want I want to know what you guys have to think about this. It feels like, and it feels like this in the past as well, not just this season. That 
they they get up with a good pitching. When it's a bad pitching that they've never seen before, they have nothing. But then, like, after, like, I mean, Manoa's a good pitcher, and they couldn't touch him when he was a rookie. And now, as it's gone on, it's like, all right, well, they've gotten a little bit better. I mean, they got up for Scherzer. You know, even the first time they faced Scherzer, they had, you know, decent at-bats. Even Verlander, they had some hits off of, you know. I, I feel like they get up for the good pitching, and the young pitchers they never see, they have, like, no game plan. Like, they're it's just going the, up there swinging. It's the amount of quit that you see in the at-bats when things are going wrong that's, like, most concerning to me. It's like these innings go by in the blink of an eye, one, two, three, and it, it, it's just non-competitive at-bats, first-pitch flyouts or, or three-pitch strikeouts, and, and that's the most frustrating aspect of it. It's like you get shut down by, obviously, a good pitcher, or, but like any pitcher, if, if, if it's just on any given night a pitcher is shoving, like, yeah, okay, pretty much any pitcher can shut down an offense on a given night. But when it happens so consistently with this team, and you see just quitting in them, that's what gets to me. That's what I look at it, and I'm like, I, I don't see how this team is just magically going to snap their fingers and we're going to start to – where is that team in the first half? Where is the May and June Yankees? Unrecognizable right now. Who's the first person you think of when you say three-pitch three, three flyout? <laughs> uh, well, I, I, I immediately I go to pitch, one person. I, I said three-pitch <laughs> strikeout, but uh, – I thought you well, said flyout. Who, who uh, Logan, who do you think of three-pitch flyout? The man who shall not be named. Oh no no no! I think of Aaron Hicks. Oh, I think I think, I think, of, I think pop, of Aaron Hicks. Pop out to in, third base. Pop out, out infield. Yeah, pop infield, out infield. Pop out. That's uh, it. Feels like that's every single at bat. Yeah, infield pop out or double play with the bases loaded. That's the Aaron Hicks special. Um, yeah. Okay. So too many Aaron Hicks is in the lineup, but he, I mean that's it's not Aaron Hicks that's causing the Yankees to score six runs over twenty nine innings. No, it's not, but it, the fact that they are not hitting, they're all hitting like Aaron Hicks. Maybe he's a problem. Maybe they need to get him out of the locker room. He's being he's, His lack of hitting is contagious. So it was actually Aaron Hicks, not Joey Gallo, that was the problem. Ooh, for the that's a good room. conspiracy theory because Gallo's OPS is in a very different place right now in, in, uh, in L.A. Yeah. I'm sick of seeing those comparisons because he was never going to do it with the Yankees, and I've moved past that. But I, don't, I, I look at what the Yankees still have in the lineup, and they should be good enough to score more runs than they are. They'll see it. They'll be good. I, I'm, I'm, again, still confident in this team and, and this offense because I know for a fact that this offense is not as bad as, as we have seen in, uh, in this last month. They're just not. They're not as bad. And if it's, if it's the, uh, the pressure of you know, uh, a team getting closer in the standings and the, you know, or going up against a good pitcher or they have to you know, feel that heat towards the end of the season, then so be it. If they can perform in those, in those moments, then – then I guess we'll find out the hard way. Um, the only way that you can is if they show up. But they have everything. I, I've, I, I'm so sick of saying this. They have the talent to do it. It's just a matter of them actually doing it. And the pitching, even though their Nestor Cortez is on the IL, do you think that is a little bit of an innings management thing, or are you a bit more concerned? I mean, they they are calling it a grade two groin strain. Yeah, I think anytime you have a problem with the lower half of a pitcher, it's a it's a problem because then they can't get the reps. Same thing with Chapman here. You got to build back up again. And that's that's where, you know, I think a lot of variation and, and, and bad things could potentially happen, especially with a guy who's got starting uh, starting pitcher uh, longevity. So it'll be interesting to see how long he's out. Hopefully it's, it's uh, the minimum. But it's definitely something for us to watch because right now they're, they're thin. And, you know um, – Herman pitched well. Herman's pitching well he in this stepped spot. Stepped up his last couple starts. Yeah, he, he's doing he the job. Actually, he's doing the job. People thought he would do, but it it no, it, it makes this Jordan Montgomery thing. Job. It makes this Jordan Montgomery thing look even even more crazy because we knew this. We knew that they needed depth towards the end of the season. This has been a storyline all year. What's going to happen at the end of the year? How are they going to manage some of these innings? Because it was inevitable to happen. So if if we're looking at you know, a, a few of these phantom IL situations, uh, potentially just to, to get some uh, innings relief, then like, it could have been avoided. Well, th that, I mean, we knew that Nestor Cortez was potentially going to have to have his innings managed, but I still look at it, and Tyone Cole and Herman 
pitched 21 innings and only allowed two runs combined over the first three three starts of this series. That should be good enough to win those first three games. Of oh, this I'm series. not even talking about the, to win the games. They for sure should oh, have won the game. But no so doubt. the starting rotation is still pitching well enough. Yeah, Clark Schmidt didn't pitch well, but okay, that shouldn't you shouldn't even be in a position where you have to win that game to win the series at that point because you have had plenty of pitching up until that point to have won three out of four, and then it's like gravy on the last day. You gotta you gotta fill in the starter going, but. Because the offense was so putrid, that's that's not what happened. So it no, makes it seem a lot worse than, it does. and a lot more uh, like gloom and doom with the fact that, okay, Nestor Cortez is going on the IL. He's been the most consistent starting pitcher in the rotation. And now he's out for maybe it's just maybe it's just a couple weeks and it's just innings management. He comes back and doesn't miss a beat. Maybe it's worse than that. And what if it's worse than that? Then you start to go. Then your mind starts to go and point to that Jordan Montgomery. Well, thing, that's what I'm talking like, well, about because it could be worse than that. And with him being, you know, not down, and it's a lower, it's a lower body injury, which means you can't get your normal rep in. If you're a lower body injury, like that, it's hard to say that that's a phantom thing because they're they have to be treating it like a lower half injury. You can't do a, a ton with it. The other thing, what it does is. When you see the offense struggling like this, it just puts added pressure on the bullpen, even though the starting pitch is going well, because now you still have latent close games because the offense can't do a damn thing because the, the pitching staff uh, in the rotation has done well and done their job. And now you're, you're forced to go into the bullpen and use your high leverage guys because you can't score any damn runs. That is also a massive impact when you, especially going on the West Coast, you have a four game set like this. It can't be under valued when when you're not scoring runs you now you have to lean on more guys which puts the bullpen in a much more taxed situation and that's exactly what we're looking at you sprinkle in an injury like chapman and now you're in a much more difficult position and you have to make you know decisions that you probably wouldn't have if people were were healthy when the offense is is this bad any little thing that goes wrong even if it's uncharacteristic like the dj lemayhew error uh, that lost them the game on Saturday. That that just seems m so much more glaring than where if the offense is doing its job, you can withstand an error. You can withstand someone going down for 15 days or 20 days. But but you can't you cannot win games with the offense this bad. It's been this way for for a month and a half. Like we can we can dissect everything else about this team. I'm sorry when the offense could is so bad scoring for the for a while in August prior to the last few like week they were averaging under two runs a game. What are you going to do with under two runs a game? It's not sustainable for success. It's just not. It, it, th thank God your pitching staff is doing well and and you're maintaining a uh, semblance of a decent record and staying in front of the AL East. So that's the other thing is that they're staying in front of the AL East and that's a good thing, but it has nothing yeah. to do with their offense. Yeah, they're in Anaheim to finish the West Coast portion of the road trip, but the road trip th th doesn't get easier. Anaheim just swept the Blue Jays, and, and then the Yankees have Tampa. Um, let's take a look at, at tonight's over-under. We're going to do it using WinBet, which is live in Arizona, Colorado, Indiana, Louisiana, Michigan, New Jersey, New York, Tennessee, and Virginia. They bring the excitement of the win Las Vegas to online sports betting and casino play. From boosted same-game parlays to live in-game odds on every major sport, WinBet has what you need to win. Sign up today using our code XBLUEWIRE and you get a special offer. You can bet $50 and win $200. Tonight's over-under is eight runs. Uh, Yankees are favored by a run and a half. And the, their over-under for run scored is four and a half. <laughs> what are you flipping the coin on right now? I'm going over. I'm going over. I'm, going, oh, I'm hitting yeah, the over. Drinking, drinking some hopium. You shooting up some hopium? Yeah, no, I think the 75% uh, Yankee fans out there is going to uh, to lift some spirits. Now, I don't know. It's a matter of, like, playing the numbers. You haven't played – you know, this is where I bet on do. When you struggle as mightily as they had over the last two games uh, with, run, with runners in scoring position and actually putting runs across the board and getting hits, uh, something's got to give. So uh, a lot of West Coast guys going L.A., uh, taking the over. I mean, you got it. They've got to hit this guy, Jose Suarez, right? Like he's averaging over three walks per nine innings. <laughs> Come on. Come on. You, you cannot get shut down by this guy. No, that's – they have they did not have a very good success over – the kid in Oakland had, a, I think, a 6 ERA. It was shutting them down. They had like spot starters coming in and shutting them down. So I'm not really looking at their stats. They just need to go out there and hit the damn ball. There's also going to be a lot of talk this week of, of Otani or Judge for MVP. Like, there's still a lot of articles being written about it. I mean, obviously, we're biased. 
we think it should be judge all the way. But what do you what do you think? Do you think that the, it's just Otani because he's good on both sides is just undeniable, and there's pretty much nothing a single offensive player can do to to best it. They need they need to clearly identify what the MVP award is finally, especially and maybe that that will come to light with a guy like him because in theory yes you could look at Otani and 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 vote for him every single year every single year no matter what happens if he has it puts together a decent year and he's put together good numbers on both sides so it's hard to argue that he's not the most valuable player to a uh, to a team Judge is putting up. Uh, the most valuable season to a team and the most valuable statistics to a team. But is that what the award is? Because that's not what it's been given to in the past. It's a problem that they have so much gray area in here. A pitcher can win the MVP. Maybe that shouldn't be the case, but, and you're just looking at his offensive numbers. That would make things a lot more clear in that case. Judge is the MVP of the season. There's no doubt in my mind, he is the MVP, but I understand why it's such a problem with Otani because he's doing something that, we just have never seen before uh, in any of our lifetimes. And the guy is a unicorn. So I understand why it's a problem. I think this is a pretty easy fix. You have the, you have the Cy Young. Maybe you then create the Babe Ruth Award for the offensive version of Cy Young. And then you have the MVP Award, which is clearly defined as most valuable to the, that individual team's success that season. And then the writers can obviously have some interpretation on, on that and still vote for Otani if they choose. But if you define it that way, I, I find it hard to believe that you would vote for Otani over Judge if it's clearly defined that way. And then maybe Otani doesn't win any awards because, like, well, he's not been the most, he's not been the best offensive player, he's not been the best pitcher, right? So maybe he doesn't win any awards. You can also look okay. at his team. Okay, you're 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 a valuable team. You're a valuable. A piece on a team that doesn't make the playoffs. How valuable actually are you at that point? That, you know, that that's where you go back to like A Rod's championships Depends or on MVPs the with uh, with Texas. It's about stats, all about stats. But now they have to clearly define those. Yeah, no, one hundred percent. I mean, the only thing, like obviously, I think Judge is the MVP. I mean, his WAR is better than Otani's, which is the only stat that you can really use to compare them one to one because it's the only thing that encompasses everything. But you could make the case. I'm looking at Otani's numbers now that he is having a better season this year than he did last. I mean, he's a much better pitcher. He's cut his year by a half a run. He's basically made – he made tw- he's made 22 starts so far this year. He only made 23 last year. Um, I mean, he had a better offensive season last year, 965 OPS, which is insane. But he has an 874 this year. I mean, he's yeah. not it, – Relative it, to it, the it league, is unbelievable. isn't that – is that almost on par? Because relative to the league, because the offensive um, OPS is down. This so year. one, so it's a last year was a one fifty seven OPS plus. This year it's a one forty five. Okay, so, so it's still. But he's much. He's a much better pitcher. Uh, still, roughly fifty percent better than the league. Yeah, exactly. It's it's sick. I mean, it is. There's a pretty clear case to be made for him. There's no doubt, and it's and it's unfortunate that this is gonna gonna be uh, a potential problem, and I, I hope it doesn't end up being a potential problem for Judge because. Uh, right, what are we talking problem like? Of course, he for the voting. For the voting, he's already been. If he comes in second, does he become cheaper? Because then maybe I'll become become in (laughs) second. (laughs) Well, you know who's going to be lobbying the writers to vote for Otani? Randy Levine. (laughs) Levine's (laughs) getting his dirty paws in there. (laughs) This is bring down the value. You got you got you got J Rod signing half a, half a billion dollar contract, so it does. I think I think Judge is going to be okay in the free agency when he hits free agency. But uh, we do have to wrap it up. It, it's it's been a chaotic Monday, so we appreciate you guys bearing with us. Scott and I will be back again later this week uh, after the Anaheim series, and then of course we'll be talking about the the weekend games coming up against Tampa. So t- stay tuned for that. Please submit your mailbag questions in the voicemail line and all that good stuff. Follow us on Twitter, and we'll talk to you guys in a few days.